So, I own a lot of video games. Like, a lot of video games. I'm a collector, so, you know, that's to be expected. But the percentage of those games I've played to a significant degree is not a great ratio, all things considered. The percentage of those I've finished is even less impressive. You know, I tend to stick to a handful of favorites over and over, I mean, who doesn't? But after a while, I start to wonder if all those games sitting on the shelves are going to waste. So I had the idea, why not just, just play them? I know, sounds simple, right? But not just play them at my own whims. No, 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 no. I'm too much of a nerd to let that happen. I need to play them all to completion, in order of original release. This will accomplish two things in my weirdly obsessive mind. One, it'll finally let me tick these games off of my list. And uh, two, it'll be a nice little microcosm of video game history by seeing how my preferred genres and franchises evolved over the years. I own well over a hundred games at this point. Plenty of those are RPGs, which seem to relish in wasting the player's time. So this is going to be a long endeavor, and as we move further down this list, closer to the present day, the games are going to get longer and longer on average. So for now, I'm relishing the fact that the earliest game I own, for all intents and purposes, can be finished in about half an hour. Donkey Kong was originally an arcade title developed by Nintendo in 1981, and ported to the NES in 1983. The NES version is what I'm playing here via the Wii Virtual Console, played on legitimate hardware and recorded using a capture device. The NES version did see a couple of changes from the arcade original due to cartridge capacity limits, namely the removal of the cement factory and most of the cutscenes. The ending is pretty much the only one left. The game itself does play identically, however, and being only three levels instead of four like the arcade game, it can be finished in a little under 20 minutes, even after getting a few game overs. Well. I say finished, but truth be told, there's really no end to this game. Being an 80s arcade title, when the player reaches the end, the levels just loop infinitely until the player gets a game over or gets bored enough to stop playing. For the purposes of this playthrough, I beat the A game once, which then loops into the B game, and then I kept going on that until I got a game over. What's the difference between the A and B games, you ask? The B game is designed to be harder and more random, and yeah, I found it a lot harder to gauge when obstacles would be coming while playing the B game. As for the game itself, what can I really say about Donkey Kong that hasn't already been said? Mario, aka Jumpman, carpenter not plumber extraordinaire, has to rescue Pauline not Peach from Donkey Kong as he climbs to the top of various construction sites and hurls barrels down at anyone who tries to pursue. You'll notice that Mario is a lot more fragile here than in his later game appearances, as any fall from a height bigger than his own body will result in an instant death. And he falls like a stone, too. Any gap wider than a single sprite will cause him to plummet, with no way to recover or steer his fall. Momentum does not exist here. His jumps can be given a forward arc by getting a running start, but there are no variable speeds. You're either standing still or moving at a single fixed pace. Overall, Donkey Kong is really fun in short bursts. You can tell it's an arcade title, and this game has been analyzed to death by writers far smarter than I, so I'll just leave this where it is. The game is a classic. Enough said. So I didn't have much to say about Donkey Kong, so to beef up this first volume of the video series, we'll cover another game as well. Going from a classic Nintendo arcade game, we move to a classic Sega arcade game. Flicky was originally released for arcades in 1984 and was ported to the Sega Genesis in 1991. The Genesis version is what's being played here via Sonic Mega Collection. Yeah, the little birds Sonic rescues from robots actually originated in their own game years before Sonic ever existed, which is a neat little piece of gaming history. So you know how Donkey Kong was very obviously inspired by King Kong? Yeah, well Flicky was very obviously inspired by the old Sylvester and Tweety cartoons. You play as Flicky, a mama bird in a house full of cats, and have to find and retrieve a handful of chicks, here called chirps, and lead them safely to the level's exit. Flicky loses a life if she comes into contact with any of the cats, or Iggy the Iguana, but she can fend them off by picking up and throwing various dishes and knickknacks strewn through each level. If the cats touch any of the chirps Flicky is leading around, they'll separate and wander around the stage, requiring Flicky to come gather them again. Iggy can kill Flicky, but the chirps don't scatter from him. Sonic fans will notice that this basic premise was reused for Sonic 3D Blast, where Sonic has to find and retrieve flickies in each level and lead them safely to the goal. I think it works better here, though, as the simple arcade-style game design means no level overstays its welcome. Every two or three levels or so, you're also treated to a bonus round where you have to catch chirps as they fall, which 
which can be nice breathers to the action, as well as easy ways to rack up points for extra lives. Going straight from Donkey Kong to this really illustrates how movement in games changed in just a few years. Whereas Mario had no real momentum in Donkey Kong and died from any slight drop, Flicky's air distance is directly proportionate to her speed, and she can travel up and down through each level freely. She'll bounce off walls if she jumps into them, she takes a second to gain speed, and will skid for a second when stopping or changing direction. The items she throws are even subject to gravity to a certain extent, moving in a straight shot at first before falling and slowing down as they travel further. This allows for some pretty nice trick gameplay once the player masters how things work, which is a step up from the Donkey Kong approach where everything seemed a bit more mechanical. Levels are side-scrollers that loop in on themselves, so moving in one direction will mean you're going in circles. This works great with the game's core gameplay of finding and collecting objectives. Enemies don't follow preset paths, but will instead actively follow you, taking the most efficient path from their location to yours. This creates a lot of tension, but also makes the game easy to gauge and understand, since enemies will always behave in specific ways. Except for Iggy, who crawls around the walls at random and always seem to move exactly where I didn't want him to be at all times. Points are awarded at the end of each round depending on how quickly the stage was cleared, and if you manage to lead all the chirps to the exit at once rather than one at a time, you'll get cumulative points for that as well. More points will reward you with extra lives to keep you going, and you'll need those too. Flicky has a whopping 48 levels to clear. Levels are laid out so that there typically is a correct path that minimizes risk, and this turns every level into a puzzle, trying to experiment to find the path of least resistance through each one. And once you manage to pull off a level perfectly, it does feel like a real accomplishment. Overall, I played Flicky for about two hours and found it to be a pretty good time. As far as arcade games go, I actually think I prefer this over Donkey Kong. There's just a lot more going on here, and it's a much more dynamic experience. It's crazy how quickly video games evolved back then, because the difference in feel between this and Donkey Kong, a difference of only three years, is incredible. Next time, we'll break out the big guns. If you enjoyed Volume 1 in this video series, be sure to like the video, and if you want to see more, subscribe, as I'll have more coming up in the future. I was just trying something new with this video, something a little more short form, because, you know, not everything can be a 50 minute video essay. But if you want to see more like this, um, you know, like, subscribe, like I said, but uh, also consider becoming a member of the Patreon. Uh, the link will be in the description. So until next time, gamers and tamers, you uh, keep on doing what you're doing, wherever that is. Yep, we'll see you.